Well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin. Hi there, cuisine aficionados. It's Ralph behind the camera. And welcome to Cavalcade of Food. And today, Ralph, we've got another little vintage appliance tour. Oh, folks love those. We're going to look at vintage coffee urns. Just a smidge of your collection. So, you know, when 10 or 12 cups of coffee just aren't going to cut it. <laughs> Sometimes you need to make 20 or 30 or 40 or 70 or 100. In my family, yes. And, um, you know, I think that a lot of people had these in their house uh, and still do, for that matter. Uh, and perhaps it was a gift, uh, a wedding gift, or something like that for parties. You know, I remember growing up, we would have big family gatherings at the house, and Mom had one. Uh, and I think that was true for a lot of people, where, you know, everybody drank coffee, or, well, not everybody, but many people did. And so you needed to make uh, large quantities or, uh, you know, meetings, you had a card bridge party or you had a church meet, uh, gathering of dinner, some sort. And yes, uh, all kinds of meetings and things like that. And you put a pot, an urn of coffee on. So, um, you had to make those people earn it. <laughs> um, there were a number of manufacturers uh, of coffee urns. Uh, the biggies were West Bend, Marrow, and Regal. And those three companies had the lion's share. But a lot of smaller companies, Sunbeam made coffee urns. And, um, of course, you know, there were a lot of private label coffee urns from, like, Sears and Montgomery Wards and uh, other uh, department stores that were made by other companies. But for the most part, they were all made out of aluminum. Some were made out of stainless steel. And then when we got into the late 60s and 70s, they started making some out of plastic, which we'll take a closer look at. Is there a preference or is there a difference much in the material? Well, you know, it depends. Some people, uh, aluminum was the lightest weight and probably least expensive metal to use. And some companies painted aluminum. So here, this, this is kind of a smart looking mm -hmm. two-tone number here. This is made out of aluminum. It's got a painted lid and a painted body in avocado, so we know right away the time period this is from. Uh, this is a 22 cup coffee urn, and uh, sometimes they, or they had like here, this is a tricolator is the name of this, and this is made out of aluminum, but they would anodize the aluminum into with certain colors, like this copper tone, uh, and you had copper on the top or the bottom. So not real copper, just like a copper coloring. Exactly, a copper coloring in the um, in the aluminum itself. This is a 50 cup model. Now what makes it a trickolator? Well, that's the brand name. And, but part of it is, these were interesting because, Ralph, they had a basket like they all do. Mm -hmm. You can see rather large holes. Mm -hmm. You're like, man, those coffee grounds will go right through there. You, you have to put a filter there. Oh, okay. And then if you look at the top, the stem, and I don't know if you can get in close, but see those holes? Oh, yeah. So when the water would come up, it would spray evenly oh. out of those holes and into... Uh, the basket over the coffee grounds and this was like their little patent that they had. I see. Um, did it make better coffee than any of these other ones? I don't know. Everybody had to have a gimmick at some point. They did, but what I love about them is you just look at all the styles. Here's one that's got a, a anodized blue Ooh, bottom. Yeah. That's kind of nice. I think that's a Miro. And here's one back here, a Regal. Some of them had fun handles 
And you'll also see some of them had these spouts like you see up front, uh -huh. which are just basically a plunger Off and on, on spring. Yep. But some of them had these turn handles, Ooh. which opened up the spigot like that by turning the handles. Kind of, these were earlier models. Uh, these were notorious for leaking. Oh. Um, but uh, anyways, that was sort of the... The technology. This one, I like the handles on this one. It's kind of a short and squat. This one's got a 36 cup model. Um, and then, now, if you were mod baby, then you had something like this. This is from West Bend, and it has this really fun, loud, and <laughs> Gro groovy. Groovy is the bright word. That's what pattern they, on the outside. I understand that's what they used at. Uh, Woodstock in the Monterey yes, Pop Festival. Was, this is from uh, Rowan and Martin's Laugh Laughing Dressing Room. <laughs> yes. was, was this coffee urn. I love it. Uh, Flower Power, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. And then um, some of them, like look at look at the design of this, Ralph. Mm. Look at how it's almost triangular shaped with these sort of tapered handles on both sides. Is that cool? Um, yeah. This one is Corey. This is called the Party Perk. And I put these two together because these are both made out of stainless steel. So this one looks shiny because it's a polished stainless steel and it's much heavier than these aluminum ones because it, stainless steel weighs more. And then here is a West Bend stainless steel. And look how formal this is with these kind of these loop handles here. But this is a 30 cupper and this is in stainless steel. Some people felt that sometimes the aluminum pots would give a off flavor to the coffee. I don't know if I ever really noticed that, but stainless steel was like um, uh, a less, uh, a, a, it, it didn't really give off any kind of more, flavor. You know how sometimes people, like when you drink something out of a can, mm -hmm. they feel like they, they can taste, taste the, the metal. metal. But with stainless, some people feel, felt that you didn't more get neutral. There. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, is that a base? Does that base come off? It looks like a rocket ship. It does it? look like a rocket ship. No, it doesn't. It's all one piece. One piece. Okay. And some of them had, like this one, most of them had, uh, especially the later ones, a detachable cord. Yeah. That plugged in here. So, wait, leave it. Show that uh, the back where it has the number of cups. Yes. So that's. Uh, you'll often see this. So you'll see. So this is how you knew how much water to put in. So you would. It would make a minimum of 12, 18, 24, or 30 cups. Wow. And almost all of these have these markations. Which are also obviously on the inside. Yes, they're on. The, they're pressed right into the metal. So here, this one goes up to 30 cups. This one you see has an attached cord, uh, rather than one that sort of plugs in. And what and about going back to the trickleator for uh -huh. a quick minute? Sure. That side thing, what does that do? Um, oh, that's interesting. So if you look, this is a coffee monitor. See, there's a glass tube there in the middle, and I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but it will say 20, 30, 40, 50. And what it will tell you is how many cups of coffee are in the pot. Oh. So you, you could look without t opening, opening the, lid, the lid, you could yeah. look and say, oh, we're down to 20 cups, we better put another one on. Yeah. Okay? So that just sort of tells you. It also allowed you to see the kind of as it was brewing, the strength of the coffee. That's very now, cool. Now we've, we've done, of course, we have a big percolator collection here at Cavalcade, and you'll see most of these don't have like the glass... You know, on a lot of my coffee pots, knob uh, at the knob, top, yeah. and you can watch the coffee get darker and darker as it circulates through. These don't, most of these don't have that option. I have a few that do, but most of them don't. And so that was another way to kind of monitor the coffee. Um, here is another stainless. This one is by Fostoria. This is an automatic 30 cupper. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, I was going to ask you, too, about those little lights that are there. That's, yeah. Is that just to let you know that it's on? Those are the done lights. When it's done, okay. So when the coffee a percolation cycle is completed, the light will come on. It was called a ready light. 
so and then um, these were automatic. So the water got really hot and boiled enough to push the water through the tube and out over the grounds. Mm. And once it did that enough times and the brewing was complete, then there was a little switch that would turn the heat down by at least half. And then it was in what we call warming mode and it just kept the coffee at serving temperature. And that's when this little light would come on. Pretty ingenious the way, you know, they figured these things out. I noticed that the, um, I forget what it was called, this one yes. has a blue light. Yes, this they had a blue light. Most of them were red. Yes. Uh, some of them were white. I think that that was uh, the, one of the rare ones. You know, here's a, there's one that's got a big little red, red, looks like a clown nose. Uh, Made by Miro. By the Miromatic. Miromatic, okay. So then you got into, like I said, the uh, late 60s and into the 70s. And you can look at the colors, too. Um, look at this mod little thing. This is made by West Bend. They were mostly a metalwares company. They are they're still in business. But they got into the plastic percolator uh, scene. And you can see here, it's all plastic on the inside. It's got a metal um, uh, tube on the... But, but other than that... And I want to say, let me see if this is marked somewhere. This is like an, uh, an 18 cupper. But the most famous brand of all the plastic percolators were something called a Polyperk. And a Polyperk... I have all her albums. <laughs> ...was basically poly for the plastic, like... Um, Polymer. Polymer, po you know, po we talk, we know polyester, right? Um, and uh, they came in all these. The nice thing about the fun thing about the plastic is they could make them in any color. So you know, here's one. So here's the inside. Here's the basket. This one's a 20 cup model. You can see here, and then you know, and it was a plastic that would take the heat, wouldn't melt. Now, we know things now that we didn't know back then about plastics and heat. And now you know they make things, uh, plastics, without certain chemicals in it because heat will release certain toxins. I actually don't use these anymore uh, because... The I'm doctor sure. told you not to? Well, I don't know. You know what? And Maybe some of our food friends would know. I'm not sure the material that this is made out of, if the coffee, if any of the... the, the chemicals would leach out? The chemicals from the plastic would leach out. They're sure fun to look at. And I have used, I have made coffee in them before. They actually make pretty decent coffee. And again, with the plastic, the advantage was you didn't have any kind of metallic taste to the coffee. They did not dent. They did not get scratched up. They're light. Uh, they're very light, um, fairly easy to clean. And they came in different sizes. So here's a polyperp that is um, a 36 cupper. And it's kind of triangular shaped. Oh, yeah. But uh, the company that made polyperp was called Regal. Now, it's so funny. If you look at this, this is the polyperp. But Regal also made an aluminum, a metal uh, coffee urn. Look at those legs. Yeah. Talk about like Danish modern mm, almost. You yes. know what I mean? But see what they did with the polyperk? They tried to kind of emulate these wooden mm. legs from their, although this is triangle shaped and this is round. This was a really popular um, design. And they kind of took that as a cue to make this polyperk and they actually molded the handles right into the I side. I love that. Like I love how that. you can just grip it like that. Yep. Um, and you know when you're moving these things around if you have to you know you're talking about you know 30 cups of scalding hot coffee so you want to be careful. You want to make sure you have secure handles. Um, here is one of the most classic of all. This is just the standard West Bend 
they made this in many different sizes. This is a 24 cup. They made them in 36. They made them in 48. They made them in, I think, 72. And they made them in 100 cup models, um, this West Bend. Over here, Ralph, this is one of the prettiest ones, I think. This is a Sunbeam. Again, look at the handles on that. And um, it's in stainless steel. And I always just thought that was a really... And look at the cool kind of base that it's on. Very, yeah. you know, everyone talks about all these cool mid-century modern designs. Well, this is one. You know, they put so much thought into designing something relatively simple and straightforward as a coffee urn. I love that about these. The so, design. so stylish, this uh, one. So stylish, yeah. Really good looking. Um, and it was something that you were very pleased to put out on your buffet uh, for people to serve themselves coffee. And the issue, when I use these now, and I often do at work and here and things like that if I have a group of people, now we drink coffee out of these big giant mugs and they don't fit underneath the spouts. So you have to put this on the edge of a counter so that people can fill their cups or you have to elevate it in a way that the mugs fit underneath. But when many of these were made, a cup of coffee was an eight ounce cup. I'm looking to see if I have one handy here. This was a coffee cup, folks. This is what we drank coffee out of, something like this. Plenty of room to get this under the spout, okay? Now, not so much, because now, again, we, we've supersized our world and everything's big. Uh, these coffee urns were also used to as promotional pieces. So here's one from the 80s when Maxwell House came out, uh, was promoting their master blend coffee, which they still make, by the way. Uh, and, and I have seen these with um, dressed up like a can of Sanka or Maxwell House or 8 o'clock coffee and other coffee manufacturers sometimes would, in, in the supermarkets, would brew these and give out samples and entice you to buy their coffee. So this is an example of one of those. I think this is made by West Bend. I'm sure it is. So you couldn't actually buy those. Those were are only promotional? These were promotional, yeah. Um, and But you can see that it's just it's sort of designed to look like a cup of coffee. Uh, here's one. Look or a can hand. of coffee. A can of coffee, thank you. Here's one. Look at this handle. This is really made for carrying around. That looks like it's something you'd have in the Army or a picnic. <laughs> Doesn't it? Yeah. Right, it's got a nice strong carry handle like that on it. This is a Miro. And over here, here's one that's actually got a glass little bubble on the top so you can watch the percolating action. Uh, here, this one has one too. So you can see the coffee perking through. But let me bring this one out. So here is an interesting one, Ralph. This is an old West Bend. This one, 48 cup uh, urn, but unlike the other ones here that are all percolators, this is actually a drip. So it doesn't have a percolator. What you do is, in this chamber, you put the coffee grounds, and then you boil the water on the stove, and you put this here, you pour the water in, and it drips through into this chamber. Wow. And it's got a thermostat, and you can um, set it to different temperatures. And then when it's all boiled through, you take the coffee grounds out. Oh. And there you go. You put the lid on like that. Now, was that expensive? It looks like a lot, of, a lot going on there. Well, it probably was. I don't know what this retailed for back in the day, but um, yeah, here's your, see it's got the, you can see the bottom there. So you put your coffee grounds in there. Interesting design. This goes on top of the coffee grounds. Oh. It's got holes in it. And it allows the water to trickle, trickle through down. and then down into the chamber. Are you old enough to remember Felix the Cat and the Master Cylinder? 
Um, I remember Felix the Cat. I'm not remembering the Master Cylinder. That was the name of one of his uh, villains, and that's what. Oh, it, that's what did this it look like. like. Did Master yeah. Cylinder look like that? Pretty much, yeah. Here are some boxes that I just um, put out uh, that these came in. This was a this was a um, feature of West Bend. They made these insulated. Uh, um, coffee urns and they looked you know just like a regular coffee urn look at this avocado except they had an insulated wall you can see how thick oh yeah this is and so you'd perk the coffee and you could unplug it and say you were taking it on a picnic or outside where you didn't have electrical access it would keep it warm it keep it keep it hot for a couple of hours anyway. So that was a thing. It's funny where you see the shipping. Look, this is from the Kmart store in St. Clair Shores, Michigan. So not only would it keep it hot, but it says it could keep it cold. Keep it cold. You could put iced tea and um, punch and lemonade in one of these if you wanted to use it as a dispenser. So this is, see, it says insulated. Here's one. I just love the graphic on here. There's, look at that hairdo, Ralph. Yes. Oh boy, she spent a couple hours in the chair, didn't she? Yes, Buffon uh, for Buffon the buffet. City. And there's a cup of coffee. That's remember, that's a real cup, eight ounces there. Yep. And she's having a fancy party, and this is from Arlen's Department Store. We had them here in Michigan. I don't know. You may have had them. I think they were mostly in the Midwest and out east. Yep, I remember Arlen's. And look, it was only eight eight dollars and eighty eight cents, and avocado color. And this is a 30 cup buffet automatic percolator. And then here's some in yellow, in gold, I should say, and another avocado. Uh, here's one in gold, party perk, cup a minute. This is from Ace, this was purchased at Ace Hardware, and the price, it's very faded, was $12.77. Can you pull it out for a sec? Sure. I want to see if it has that floral design that's on the box. It's see got how a handle. Look at oh, that. Oh, it does. It has yes. that. Isn't that cool? That's beautiful. And look, it even says coffee mocha, coffee, coffee java. java. Yep, 22 cups. Look at that. Still The cord is still wrapped up in an old paper towel. Oh. Okay. So someone took good care of that paper. Very proud of their Miromatic Cup a Minute coffee maker. So, anyways, these are just fun um, little remnants of the past. And as always, we ask our food friends to share any memories that they have about coffee urns. Maybe um, uh, your mom or somebody in your family had one. Maybe you remember going to parties where there was a coffee urn, or you worked in an office that had a coffee urn. Um, and, you know, a lot of times, uh, even small little restaurants would make their coffee like this rather than a pot, which, you know, would um, go quickly. The only thing about these urns is, you know, they're not instant. They're not, you know, everyone's used to their their Keurig and, and, and having a cup of coffee in 30 seconds. Um, this says cup a minute, and that's about what you have to figure. So if you're making a 50 cup pot urn of coffee, give it 50 minutes. So almost an hour to go through the perk cycle. The cup a minute was a 22 cupper, so that would be about 22 minutes? 22 minutes, right, for a full thing. And you know, it doesn't, 22 minutes, you think that's not a lot of time. But in today's rushed world, people are like, no, I'm not, I'm, we're not waiting. People are so impatient. I know. So, but um, that's what they take. That's, that's a percolator. But one thing they all produce is a really good hot cup of coffee. Anything good is worth waiting for. There you go. Perfect. So, anyways, just um, talk about a weird thing to collect. But um, I just, you know, I have always been fascinated by, of course, I love coffee. I'm a coffee drinker. I love coffee culture. Um, 
uh, coffee is a very different thing now than it was uh, at the time that these were made. Well, these are urns, but percolators were one of the first things you started collecting. I think it was actually the first vintage appliance that I started collecting was coffee percolators, which is probably why I have more of those than anything else. But coffee urns are right up there. Um, in my love for coffee. So share your coffee urn story if you've got one. We always love hearing from you. Thank you for hanging out with us. I love having these opportunities to share the collection with you and um, we just appreciate you spending time with us here on Cavalcade of Food. Yeah, it was real nice to have you with us. Thanks for joining us and yeah. hope you can be with us for our next adventure which will be very soon in the meantime if you like what we do here please subscribe like and share and we'll see you right back here at cavalcade of food take care everybody bye perk up